Priya Chopra founded One Milk, Two Sugars, a public relations firm when she was only 22 years old. Today on Biz One on One, she's going to tell us about her experience starting a company that young and how she grew, evolved, and adapted to create a company that's now making a major impact on the market and poised for even more expansion. And Priya is going to share with us her two keys to sustain growth in a business. Welcome to Biz One on One, Priya. I'm so excited to meet you. Thank you There's for having me. There's got to be a story behind that name. Everyone asked that question even 12 years later, this name. Um, so the name started because we were three partners, uh, Milk and Two Sugars. The milk was the male, the two sugars ah. were the female. We just thought it was a fun, playful name, and it stuck. Um, people would always comment, and it would actually get us new biz because they'd be like, and looking on their caller ID, and what's this company? Let me pick it up. Who's this calling me? So uh, now the name has evolved. We have a philosophy behind the name, and just like how you take your coffee, how do you take your coffee? I take it black. You take it black. So however you take your coffee, I'm, I'm a double-double person, um, but just like how customized it is to take your coffee or your tea, uh, such is our uh, approach uh, to our service offer. So it's never cookie cutter. It's personalized. It's customized, just like uh, your cup of joe. When you started the company, it was much different than what it is today. Yes. Yeah, this company, uh, I started, as you said, quite young. So I consider it to have two chapters, the first half and the second half um, of this story, if you will. So the first six years of the company, um, because I started young, I was sort of just figuring things out, just doing one day at a time and actually thinking it wouldn't even last, if that's possible. It's funny about that, isn't it? Because yeah. we think, oh, it's all about goal setting and whatnot, and so many companies just sort of stumble into greatness. One thing leads to the other. You have to be extremely focused and committed and determined, and it's not easy. So that's why you also think it may not last, because there's other options available to you as well. So. I'm really happy it, it sustained and it's and we're, we're still kicking around and doing our thing. But the first half was a communications company. So basically, um, full service communications house, anything from graphics to printing to design to PR to events. So really saying, yes, 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 we can do this. And yes, we can wow, do that. Wow, total jack of all trades. Jack of all trades, master of none, that expression. So sort of a revelation happened. Um, a lot of things, personally, professionally, uh, came together for me around 2009. And there was a big recession happening in Canada at that time, too. Oh, I never heard about that. Yeah, yeah. remember that day? Those oh, maybe were... that's selective. <laughs> the selective. selective remembering. That's not it. Remembering. So during this whole um, era, I decided to just kind of go my own route, uh, take what I was always delivering to the business, which was media relations, um, doing my, what was my passion, um, and starting saying no to certain business and just being true to what I wanted to do to really go niche on our offer, um, and that ended up being uh, a really good move. So you decide to focus more on what you're calling, not just sort of anything to do with communications, but PR. Exactly. What is PR? What was PR then and what is PR today? Now, with the movement towards everything digital and online, that's where marketers, that's where brands want to be. Uh, whereas when I started, it was all about the glossy magazines and the publications that were, you know, all value and prestige was all held in print. But print is changing and um, we're well, living Well, print it. is disappearing. Well, that's it. It, that's it really it. is. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not quite sure that most uh, companies... Mm -hmm. have really realized they hear about quote unquote social media yes but it, it, what is social media first of all yes. but it's really all about this amazing shift over just the last few years mm -hmm. to that mobile device mm -hmm. i mean at the airport everybody's on it yeah. every kid is on it mm -hmm. it's it's so pervasive now yeah. so how do you get how do you get your clients in mm -hmm. front of their audience mm -hmm. um creatively through mobile devices. So we were lucky because in, I think we started offering social media in 2010 or 11. Wow. And just by chance, so it was one of my employees, who was a blogger, uh, her name was Trish. If she's watching this, maybe she'll remember this moment in our office. She said, Priya, you know, I have a blog, you know, why don't we start offering social media? And even though there might have been five years of a gap in age between me and her, to me, that was not my thing. I said, well, okay, I'm the PR expert. If you would like to 
lead it, please, by all means, help me wow. out. And she launched it for me. And honestly, I'm so happy we got our foot in the door that early because we were able to launch some really interesting digital programs. We actually won an award for a program that we launched in 2012 with influencers. And now the whole notion of influencer marketing is huge. So you've been uh, growing your business and you're now at a point where you're, talk, you're talking about taking it to the next level. Mm -hmm. What would be your advice, your best two tips, we promised this, your mm -hmm. best two tips on growing and sustaining a business? I think for a lot of entrepreneurs, um, it's hard to delegate tasks. They want to take Yikes. ownership of everything A to Z. And I was one of those people. Um, but when I had children, I couldn't stay awake at night. So by default, I wasn't able to do the hours that I was once putting in. So by virtue of that, just naturally, I started to train a team. Um, and this team uh, over time was, you know, the first point of contact for clients. And of course, I was always there. And I was in the background, sort of like a producer. Um, but I think a key part of growth for any business is to recruit solid talent to be able to grow the business. Sometimes you have to invest, and you may not have the business right away, but it will come. Uh, your team will be able to take on certain tasks. It will alleviate you from doing the day-to-day. -day. You can think big picture. It's been a real big formula of success uh, for my business, and I really encourage other people to think about that. So that's tip number one. Mm -hmm. What's tip number two for sustaining a business? Tip number two um, is about cash flow and having access to capital. I think that this is so important. If you really want to escalate the pace in which you want to grow your business, first of all, you have to be able to manage your cash flow to be able to obviously manage all your HR costs, all your operational costs, be able to run your business successfully, um, and also wait to be able to receive payment. I think having a good cash flow is so important. Um, and then just if you want to grow, you need an injection of capital. Uh, it's something that opened my eyes because I started my business with zero loan. <laughs> so it's a shift in thought for me. And it's been something that uh, I've been educating myself about. And, you know, other firms are also um, educating me about it. And I think that it's opened my eyes to the possibilities and not thinking it might take me another 10 years to open that New York office. Um, so I think that access to capital is key and exploring your options, even if you're not there yet, just kind of planting the seed in your mind of uh, the possibilities of what that could do for your business. Um, I think that that's a great, uh, a great thing to think about. Super fun. And you seem to be all lit up about what you're doing. And you. uh, I congratulate you. And thank you so much thank for joining you. us on uh, Biz 101. Thank Priya you. Chopra, congratulations. Thanks so much. Great to meet you. You think you know The Brick? Sure, everyone knows The Brick is the place for the guaranteed lowest prices on home furnishings. But do you know how we do it? Buying power, that's how. The Brick has over 200 locations across Canada with over 7 million square feet of showrooms. That means we buy a lot of stuff from all over the world. And the more we buy, the more you save. The Brick, saving you more. That's not just a slogan. Saving you more is our obsession. Wonder lives in you. It's the moments that capture you and make you feel alive. Leaving you breathless, wanting more. Feed your imagination, because some things are worth dreaming about, and some things are worth living. Rediscover your wonder. Shoveling snow in January and February is hard work. That's why there's Eden. Eden, the leader in on-demand cold weather snow removal and warm weather lawn care, makes it easy to request a professional and fully insured contractor to remove your snow right from your smartphone. Eden is designed for busy professionals, people with aging parents or physical limitations, snowbirds, and of course, people who just hate shoveling. Download the Eden app in the iTunes or Google Play Store today and enjoy 15% off your first job by using the promo code EDENTV. Every time I come in, Chris always follows up with me, always asks me how my service was, if there's anything that they could have done better. He, um, he makes me feel really important. You're not going to get treated better. The work done was, was awesome, but I thought that the personal touch and the service, Chris was always top notch. Uh, we've met new employees, and if I go back the next time, they know who we are. Um, whenever I take 
our cars in, I feel like I'm someone special. They treat me extremely well. Darcy Bomford is the CEO of True Leaf Pet. Darcy wants to get your dog on cannabis. Joking aside, hemp has many health benefits for dogs, including calming effects, improved hip and joint functions, and cancer-fighting properties. He's also taken advantage of the stigma surrounding cannabis to carve out a niche for his business. Darcy, nice to have you on the show. Welcome. Pleasure to be here. Uh, this is this whole area of talking about cannabis and you know the legalization and everything that's happening around North America. It's a fascinating topic, and there's companies, public companies, that are exploding in value. Mm -hmm. You're doing the pet thing. Talk to me about that. Yeah, certainly in the news these days, all over the world, really. But but our company started out as True Leaf Medicine, so we actually were one of the uh, early applicants in the federal medical marijuana program back in July of 2013. And we kind of, you know, we're slowed down with uh, the process as we're, you know, many other companies. I think there's 400 companies in the queue right now. And uh, currently there's about 33 that are approved. Uh, you started off with the, in the medical marijuana world and what was your plan there and how did yeah. you pivot? Well, yeah, originally we wanted to obviously get a license, right? And uh, so we, we uh, found a very good location in Lumbee, BC, fully supported by the community. And our to grow medical marijuana. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the licenses are actually tied to the location, so you have to have a community that supports the company, supports the application. And uh, I've been in that area for a long time, so uh, we had a lot of support locally. Uh, the RCMP was behind us. And we also actually got uh, Mike Harcourt, which is, he was the mayor of Vancouver twice, premier of BC twice. He's our chairman, so fantastic guy to have behind our company. And and uh, we're just sort of moving through that process. Now, yeah, true leaf meaning hemp? That's right, yeah. We, uh, because we sort of got sidelined with the approval process uh, about a year and a half into it, we decided to pivot into the pet industry. And my background actually is the pet industry. When I was really young, I started a company called Darford, basically took my name and chopped it up and made this company called Darford. And, I grew it over 25 years and we, we had three plants. We manufactured and marketed natural products for pets. Oh, 25 years ago, you were doing natural pet products? Yeah, back that's, in the, uh, That's yeah. pretty visionary. Yeah, I've always been an entrepreneur. I always wanted to do my own thing. I worked for a veterinarian and uh, quickly decided I didn't want to be a vet. So I sold some pet supplements for him. And then that sort of evolved into our, my own line of uh, pet products. And then I borrowed some money from a local bank in the Okanagan and bought some equipment and set up a little bakery. And then that, uh, over a period of you know quite a few years, we became actually a really large player, probably one of the largest manufacturers of dog biscuits in Canada. And we also had a couple plants in the U.S. too. So that's your background. You got interested in the, in the medical marijuana field, and now we get to it. So yeah. what, what are you doing with hemp and pets? Well, we, uh, uh, I exited my, my uh, pet food company. I had a one-year non-compete, and that's when I looked at the medical marijuana business, right? And after that non-compete was up, and we were sitting there waiting for our license, uh, the pet industry was a natural segue for us. So we essentially took cannabis in a different form, hemp, and I formulated a line of pet products, and we set up a different division called True Leaf Pet, which is owned by the mothership. Right. True Leaf Medicine. And then that company uh, has really taken off. You know, we've developed a fantastic line of products. The formulations are really working. And they're completely legal in every state and every province. So, and I, you know, I'm not a dog owner right now myself. Yeah. And, um, I mean, who doesn't love dogs? But yeah. I'm not one of those people that um, I find that they they seem to be more attached to their dog than to yeah. their family. <laughs> so, it's totally true. Yeah. So they're wide open to oh, you got a dog food, you got a supplement that's going to help my dog. So what what types of things does it help with? Well, hemp by itself is a very unique ingredient. It, it's gluten free, it's very high in protein, and it's high in fat, which contains omega three, and it's it's very digestible. So as an innovative ingredient, and you know, our, our target market basically is uh, millennials and baby boomers. 
And, uh, you know, if you do get a dog, you'll soon realize how you get attached to them, you know what oh, I mean? Oh, I know, yeah. I know, I know. I, I, I had a dog in the past, and that's yeah. part of the reason I don't have a dog is getting too attached. And that's right. Yeah, you know, I've, I've met a lot of people where they've, they've had a dog when they're younger, and they've, or not even when they're younger, when they're older. They lose the dog, and they never really get over it. You know, in fact, I lost my dog uh, this year, and it's still really tough to even talk about it, you know. Wow. But, but our, our main purpose, really, for our main company, True Leaf Medicine is quality of life. And for True Leaf Pet, it's all about returning the love. You know, that's sort of our mantra. And, uh, you know, pets every day, especially dogs, what they're all about is giving you that unconditional love, right? right? And, and that's what everybody, you know, that's what humans are really striving for is just to be recognized and appreciated, right? And that's what we're trying to bring out in our products is to return the love by, you know, giving our products to your dog. Market leader, probably because there's uh, probably not a lot of competition with people uh, using yeah. cannabis in pet products. No, there's a few people that have come out. You're right, we're, we're probably the only one that's really you know, taking a big shot at it. When you go to a lot of these trade shows, we're probably the, you know, the biggest name there. Uh, there are some other brands coming. A lot of them are just selling online or maybe selling into the gray area because CBD is still sort of frowned upon in all markets. But I think you know things are changing as, as recreational marijuana comes into vogue in Canada. You know there's some rules coming out uh, with the government. They may allow hemp leaf to be sold, which will would be great for us because we can develop a hemp leaf product, not a hemp seed product. So if I'm in the if I'm, I'm you know after seeing this, I want to get some for my dog. Is it in the stores or where do I find it? Yeah, for sure. Go to trueleaf.com and we have a store locator on there. We have a lot of support in Western Canada and actually right across Canada, but there's stores in Kelowna, Vernon, Vancouver to sell the product. True Leaf Pet, trueleaf.com. Yep. And uh, Darcy, so great to have you on the show. Best of success and congratulations on uh, what you're up to. Pleasure to be here. Thank yeah, you very much. You bet. You think you know the brick? Sure, everyone knows The Brick is the place for the guaranteed lowest prices on home furnishings. But do you know how we do it? Buying power, that's how. The Brick has over 200 locations across Canada with over 7 million square feet of showrooms. That means we buy a lot of stuff from all over the world. And the more we buy, the more you save. The Brick, saving you more. That's not just a slogan. Saving you more is our obsession. Wonder lives in you. It's the moments that capture you and make you feel alive. Leaving you breathless, wanting more. Feed your imagination because some things are worth dreaming about and some things are worth living. Rediscover your wonder. Shoveling snow in January and February is hard work. That's why there's Eden. Eden, the leader in on-demand cold weather snow removal and warm weather lawn care, makes it easy to request a professional and fully insured contractor to remove your snow right from your smartphone. Eden is designed for busy professionals, people with aging parents or physical limitations, snowbirds, and of course, people who just hate shoveling. Download the Eden app in the iTunes or Google Play Store today and enjoy 15% off your first job by using the promo code EDENTV. Peter, who's outside? That guy? I sold him the chainsaw this morning. Steve Harvey is the founder and CEO of Business Finders Canada. It's a commercial real estate brokerage that's rolling out right across the country. Steve's going to share with us the top five reasons why you should have a valuation. Steve, welcome to the program. What, buyers of companies now, who are they? All these smaller companies, not the big, huge companies, but the what, 89%? 89, 89%, yeah. 89 of companies in Canada are smaller, medium-sized enterprises. 
and you're the guy that helps them with the process of either buying or selling. So who's buying these companies? You know, everybody and anybody is buying these companies. People come from uh, all over Canada uh, looking to buy businesses uh, right now, you know, in BC, uh, where we're situated. Um, and these people are, you know, coming from Ontario, they're coming from Alberta, they're, they're coming from within the province. And there, there's also uh, immigration, a lot of immigration coming into the country as well. So but, people, but who are they? Like, are they people that have owned their own businesses in the past mostly, or they come from the corporate world, or who are they? So most of them uh, come from the corporate world. Uh, most buyers right now that are buying these small companies uh, have never owned a company before. Uh, they're tired of the corporate world, um, and uh, they see opportunity out there. Uh, there's a lot of people that also come in that uh, are looking on the, on the, you know, the, the small to mid-sized companies for investment purposes. So they're, they're looking at a company and going, you know what, I need to put my money somewhere. Uh, where can I put the money where I have more control of it? I can, I can put it into a business. And you also, I guess, sell companies where the buyer may not necessarily be the full-time operator of the business as well. So that it can be for on an investment type of basis. Yeah, absolutely. We work with a number of different investment companies, a number of uh, companies as well as individuals that are looking to buy businesses uh, that, you know, they need to have a certain, uh, what I call EBITDA uh, yeah. number that, uh, that makes sense for them to be able to do that. Uh, you obviously can't go in and, and buy a small mom and pop business and be an investor in that sort of company. So, if I am watching this program right now and I'm interested, I'm thinking I would like to be an entrepreneur and how do I start? I don't necessarily have to start my own company. I could contact Steve and say, hey, what do you, you got some business for, businesses for sale? Yeah, so the Business Fighters Canada has several companies for sale at any given time and we qualify those businesses. So even as a, <clears throat> a seller, you just can't come to us and say, you know what, Steve, I'd like $2 million to retire for my business. Well, right. you might need $2 million to retire. So we qualify that business, and if it's only worth 1.2, that's what we're prepared to take it to market for. So we pre-qualify the business and work with the seller, but then we also do that for the buyer. The buyer knows that we've pre-qualified that business, and then we qualify the buyer. So we have many buyers that come, or many buyers out there want to buy a business, but they don't know what they want. Right, so, and, and I, I take it that most people have an idea of what type of business they want to buy, Ideally, something that interests them, but it, I guess it doesn't necessarily have to be. No, well, in fact, it's the other way around. Most people don't know. I mean, they they have some money, they want to buy a business, but they actually don't know what they want to buy. So we we work with those buyers and and uh, you know focus them down into an area. You know, for example, you're either interested in buying a restaurant or you're not. Right. Right. So when someone says, "Hey, I'm interested in anything. I've got you know five hundred thousand dollars," which then probably qualifies them for something up to one and a half million dollars. Um, you know what, are you interested in a restaurant? Well, no, I'm actually not interested in a restaurant. I'm interested in, you know, I'm interested in retail, but I'm not interested in service. So we, we narrow that focus for them. And we promised to tell people the top five reasons to have a valuation. What even is a valuation? I take it, it's like, uh, it's like people that own a house have an idea of what their house is worth. It's a little different with a business. It's a little bit more of a moving target. And of course, most people that own a house think their house is worth more than, than it actually is. And for the most part, it's not that different from, from business owners. I mean, there's, a business owner has a relationship with their business. They, they're close to it. You know, it's their baby that maybe they've grown over the last 30 years. So, you know, what is a valuation? Well, you know, a definition of a valuation is, you know, an estimate of something's worth. Uh, but in business, it's also an estimate of, you know, what a reasonable buyer would pay for your business. Well, at the end of the day, any valuation of anything comes down to what someone is prepared to pay. So I take it that there's some, you know, in, in the larger business world, there's all these dynamics or, or uh, ways of valuing a company. There's probably 30, 40 different ways to value a company. With a smaller business, it, it, it still boils down to primarily what type of profit or, as you said, EBITDA, earnings before interest taxes, whatever, uh, depreciation, uh, it's usually the multiple of the pro of the profit. So if someone's got a profit of, uh, of half a million dollars a year, you know, round figures, three or four or five times that is theoretically the value of the business. But there's much more to it than that. Yeah, I mean, like you said, there's no scientific method in valuing a business. There are literally hundreds of ways, whether you're small or large, 
but there are really, you know, some basic or, you know, maybe five ways that the industry, the banking system looks at it. And that's really what it comes down to because most businesses, uh, buyers are going to need financing. Right. The majority of them need financing. So you're going to have to put that financing through the bank. So you're going to have to look at it from also the banks, the bank size. So you've got ways like you've got your business market value, which is similar to what you'd see in the housing market. It's more of a comparison. You, you can what have other businesses like this sold, sold for, for recently? Okay, yeah, exactly. so that's one. One, you've got, you know, your what's called uh, seller's discretionary earnings, um, or you've maybe heard the term recasting of financials. Uh, and that's where you take the, you know, the net profit and you add things back that, you know, go back to the owner, like the, the owner's wages, uh, right. amortization, which we talked about, depreciation which, is, which of, is really just depreciation right. of assets. You don't write a check for depreciation. It's just a, a taxable benefit that you get. Uh, interest on long-term debt as well uh, gets added back uh, in, in that EBITDA formula or in seller's discretionary earnings. So what are the top five reasons to have a valuation? Well, one, everybody thinks that, you know, the first reason is because you want to sell your business. So that's one reason. Two, you want to understand the process that's involved. Uh, and so going through that process of knowing what your business, you know, understanding where the numbers come from is really, really important. Um, you need to understand, you know, the landscape of your business, you know, what your competitors are doing, the direction that you're going. And, uh, you know, the biggest reason is understanding the financial conditions of your business because, you know, evaluation will tell you where your business has been, where you're at today, and, you know, most importantly, where you're going in the future. Awesome, Steve. It's great to know there is a service for such an important part of the economy. Thanks for joining us today, Steve. Yeah, thank Real you. Real pleasure Andy. to meet you. Thank you. And uh, now I'm going to... from someone who cares PDC Chartered Accountants the approachable guys who care about you and your business you think you know the brick sure everyone knows the brick is the place for the guaranteed lowest prices on home furnishings but do you know how we do it buying power that's how the brick has over 200 locations across Canada with over 7 million square feet of showrooms that means we buy a lot of stuff from all over the world and the more we buy the more you save the brick Saving you more, that's not just a slogan. Saving you more is our obsession.